Testing of Hypothesis In testing of hypothesis, we are going to define first what is a hypothesis. Hypothesis is a hypothetical thinking to draw out and test its logical or empirical consequences as well as clause of a conditional statement. Hypothesis is any assumption or assertion made on the distribution of a sample population which is either true or false. Usually, these assumptions are stated as everything is the same, equal or no significant, but if this assumption is said to be false, then there is always an alternative hypothesis. In conducting a quantitative research, Hypothesis and hypothesis testing is very, very important. Hypothesis testing is also called a significant testing. This is a statistical procedure in determining which hypothesis is more acceptable as true or which hypothesis is more likely to be false. In order for us to formulate that one, we are going to have these steps in testing hypothesis. The first one we have to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. For the null hypothesis, this is a statement being tested which usually denoted by H sub O. It is assumed that the computed figure is the true value of the parameter being tested at hope or rejected. Let's have this example. The performance of male students is the same with the performance of the female students. Next one, the mean of the first variable is the same with the second variable. Third example, there is no significant difference on the performance between the respondents. And the fourth one, the distribution of farmers according to age is normal. As you notice, for these four examples, they are saying the same thing. It's either they are equal, they are the same, or the two variables that we are comparing are equal, the two variables that we are comparing are the same, or there is no significant difference. So that is for the null hypothesis. We are assuming that the two variables are the same, or the two variables doesn't have a significant difference. So as you notice with the four given examples, they are speaking the same. Like between the two variables, they are the same. Between the two variables, there is no significant difference. Or the distribution of farmer according to age is normal. Or it's like saying that the two variables that you are using is equal. That is for the null hypothesis. We are assuming that there is no significant difference between two variables. So, we are assuming also that they are the same. With this assumption, our assumption can be there is no better performance between male and female. We cannot say that the male students are better than the male than the female students. We cannot say also that the mean of the first variable is greater than the second variable. For the null hypothesis, we assume that the two variables that we are comparing are all equal. <coughs> Next one is the alternative hypothesis. For the alternative hypothesis, a set of statement that directly contradicts the null hypothesis and will be a possible substitute to an assumption. This will be acceptable if the null hypothesis was rejected and denoted by H sub A. For example, we have the performance of male students is better than the performance of the female students. Second one, the mean of the first variable is not equal with the second variable. Third one, there is a significant difference on the performance between the respondents. Fourth one, the distribution of farmers according to age is not normal. As you notice on the given example, alternative 
hypothesis is basically saying that one variable is better than the other variable or the one variable given is not equal to the second variable that's why we call them as the alternative hypothesis if we are going to reject our null hypothesis which basically saying that everything is equal we are going to use the alternative hypothesis stating that they are not equal or they are not balanced or one variable is better than the other variable that is for the alternative hypothesis that is the first step in testing hypothesis we are going to formulate our null and alternative hypothesis second step we are going to choose the statistical test to be used. In the previous video that we had, we discussed the different parametric and non-parametric tests that we are going to use in our research. So this depends on the result of the exploratory data analysis. If it meets the assumption of the normal distribution test when we use the parametric test and non-parametric test if it fails the assumption. So we are going to use the parametric test if we, are go if we met the assumptions and then non-parametric test if we fail the assumptions. Then we have the third step. We have the computation or the data generation. So the p-value or the significant level is the basis of the acceptance and rejection of the null hypothesis. So we have here the p-value as our basis. So we have different p-values that we basically use in statistics. So if p is greater than 0 0.05, then there is no level of significance or ns. If P is less than 0 0.05 and P is greater than 0 0.01, then there is a significant difference. We use that asterisk, one asterisk there, meaning significant. If P is less than or equal to 0 0.01 and P is greater than 0 0.001, then there is a high significant. We use two asterisks in our value indicating that the value is high significant letter d if p is less than 0 0.001 and p is greater than 0 0.000 then there is a very high significant meaning we are going to put three asterisks on whatever computed value that we have indicating that that is very high significant so that is the third step. The fourth step now is the decision and conclusion. After making the first, second, and third steps, we are going to decide and conclude now basing on whatever computed value that we have. So stage where you either accept or reject the null hypothesis. If the computed value lies within the rejection region, the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise accepted. The conclusion is being drawn by answering the original problem. So let's have these examples. Let's say for example, your computed p-value is greater than 0.05. Then there is no sig level of significance. If this is our case, how are we going to make our decision and how are we going to state our conclusion? So for decision, since the computed p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then we accept the null hypothesis. If it's greater than 0 0.05, then we accept the null hypothesis. Decision, the performance between the male and the female students has no significant difference. Okay, so the performance between the male and the female students are the same, are equal. Okay, so that's how we are going to make our conclusion. How about if we have the second example? Let's say for example, your computed p-value is less than 0 0.05 and greater than 0 0.01. Then we can conclude that there is a significant difference. 
So for our decision, since the computed p-value is lesser than 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Since it's less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. That is actually our basis. All numbers less than 0.05 reject the null hypothesis. The only time that we are going to accept null hypothesis is if that is greater than 0.05. Okay, for the conclusion, the mean of the first variable is not equal with the second variable. Or we can state it this way, there is a significant difference between the mean of two variables. Okay, so we can state it in any other ways that we want as long as we show that they are not equal. Then, if p is less than or equal to 0 0.01 and p is greater than 0 0.001, then there is a high significant. Then, otherwise, for letter D, there is a very high significant. So, that's how we are going to make our decision and conclusion in steps in testing hypothesis. Let's have this example. A professor wants to determine who performs better between the two sections of students. He made a 40-item test and administered to his students. Let's formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. So we have two variables, two sections of students, and 40-item test administered to his students. Students. So, how are we going to formulate our null hypothesis? Let's start with the null hypothesis. There is no significant difference between the performance of the two sections. Meaning, the performance of the two sections are equal. For the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference between the performance of the two sections. What other ways can we have for the alternative hypothesis? We can just say that the performance of the first section is better than the performance of the second section. The performance of section A is higher than the performance of section B. We can state those alternative also. Then, choosing statistical tests. Let's say, for example, we did... Uh, parametric test or non-parametric test which will be discussed soon as we go on then we have computation or data generation at 0 0.05 critical value then letter D decision and conclusion say for example decision accept the null hypothesis if p-value is more than point. 0 0.05 but reject it if it is lesser than 0 0.05 and accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay, let's say for example, the computed value that we had is 0 0.052. What would be our decision? Are we going to accept the null hypothesis or are we going to reject the null Hypothesis. Again, the computed value is 0 0.052. Okay, so if our computed p-value is 0 0.052, we are going to accept the null hypothesis because our computed value is greater than 0 0.05. Okay, so the conclusion will be depending on the decision and then the decision is depending on the computed p value here okay so that would be for the steps in testing hypothesis this is your activity given the problem set and the computed p value formulate the null and alternative hypothesis and you may are going to make the decision and conclusion Use 0 0.05 as the critical value, then put your answer in a long band paper. Please put it in a handwritten form. Okay, number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4. Given the computed p-value here. 
So, let's say for example, number one, a survey was conducted to determine whether the distribution of the farmers according to the farm size is uniform. You are going to create a null and hypothesis null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis basing here and then let's say for example the computed p-value is 0.008 what would be your decision what would be your conclusion if the p-value is 0.039 what would be your uh, what would be your conclusion what would be your decision so that's all for today